Welcome to From Field to Stream TV. In this program, we were going to be going woodcock shooting, but due to the torrential rain, etc., it was an absolute no go. Didn't want to ruin the camera. So, a pal of mine ended up taking me stalking, and we got two cracking culbies. Hope you enjoy the program. Mm. So Jason, we're on this fantastic West Coast estate and you're the head keeper? I am the deer stalker on the estate, yes. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. I've been here, well I originally started in the estate in 1988, mm -hmm. uh, some time ago. Right, it's a while ago. <laughs> a bit crusty these days. Um, <laughs> then I left the estate in 95, I was away travelling for a couple of years, then I came back. Uh, just doing the, the stags uh, yeah. with Peter Manson, he was the old uh, keeper who's now retired, who mm -hmm. I've taken over from. Yes. And then about eight years ago, when Peter retired, I came back and I now work here on a contract basis. That's fantastic. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I really enjoy it. It's uh, as a sort of part-time uh, thing. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you've you've got quite a number of beasts to cull out every year. I, we're we're kill, killing roughly uh, about uh, 40 uh, odd stags. And about 40 to 50 hinds, mm -hmm. and usually around about sort of 30 odd roe deer. Right, as many so, roe deer as that? Yeah, yeah, aye, aye, aye. right, yeah. Um, uh, the, in the last sort of decade or so, there's been uh, three uh, regen blocks planted, and I think that's actually ah. helped to increase the population, yes, of course. Definitely, <laughs> for roe. Created habitat for them, I. Yeah, so, yeah. Aye. Well, I'm looking forward to heading out with you on a bit of a, a right. culling mission. Right, see what we can do. And uh, we'll have a chat in a wee while about this rifle of yours. Yeah, sounds good. Right, let's head off and uh, hopefully we get a bit of Very sport or culling. Right, <laughs> there we go. This is a uh, rifle that I use, my uh, working rifle. It's, a, it's originally a, a Remington 700 uh, VS, which I bought from Rifle craft down south, uh, they sort of uh, accurise standard Remington rifles. Um, well, after the original factory barrel had shot somewhere around 3,000 rounds, I had a Krieger barrel uh, fitted uh, by Jim down at North Ayrshire Shooting Ground. Uh, and I can only say that it shoots very well, very accurately. Uh, I use a Schmitten Bender PM2 scope, uh, which is a good balance between a sort of target shooting uh, scope and uh, you know a practical stocking scope. Uh, very hard wearing, takes a lot of knocks. Um, Harris bipod. I've got uh, the one of the. I don't think it's the most recent. Uh, but it's a fairly recent model of the ATEC moderator, uh, very compact, aluminium, I think there's one stainless steel baffle in it, uh, very lightweight, again very practical, not designed for shooting uh, huge groups at a time, uh, but right for half a dozen shots, no problems. Uh, we've also got a Badger Ordnance tactical bolt knob on the, the bolt end there, which it uh, just makes the, 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 the bolt much easier to cycle, especially if you can't feel your hands out in the hill in uh, January and February. Uh, also, Badger Ordnance uh, 
mounts, uh, rings for the, the scope and a Remington shower. But overall a very practical, uh, you know, fairly lightweight, customised rifle. Uh, great, great rifle. Very pleased with it. Looking a bit worse for wear, but as I say, it's a working rifle. Uh, I'm not up for looks. Uh, just a great machine. Great machine. Okay, I've had uh, a report recently of a couple of calves uh, hanging about. Whether or not they've been orphaned or not, I'm not sure, but yeah, I've seen them here at the side of the road, so I'm just going to take them off the car here. Um, that was uh, a couple of, uh, I suspect they've been orphaned calves. Uh, so, you know, at this time of year when they've not got their mothers, they're not going to cope very well with the, the rest of the winter. Not necessarily through, you know, not getting fed or lacking milk, more the sort of social contact and not having their, uh, their mothers with them. So, the best thing to do is take them out. We'll see what kind of condition they are, whether or not they can be entered into the food chain or not. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. What to do now? Sit. Sit. Pretty, pretty emaciated that one. Uh, I don't think I'd be keen to use either of them to be honest. It really, uh, you know, it might seem a shame to a lot of people, you know, wasting beasts like that, but. You know, there's, there's very little weight on them. I always kind of gauge it. You know, at the end of the day, it's up to the stalker to call whether or not you're going to use a carcass. And if 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 you see a beast that you wouldn't really want to eat yourself, then you wouldn't want to put it into the food chain. So I think uh, with both these calves, I'll uh, take them to the pit and uh, uh, dump them. I think that's the best shout there. I wouldn't be comfortable with, with using them. I'll give her a retreat. That'll do now. Good girl. Sit. Five street. Good girl. Good girl. Uh, right, this calf here is sort of borderline. I think it's it's not too too bad condition, so I'm gonna growl at it and uh, just see what kind of condition it is when I get back to the larder. That, the, the last sort of uh, two or three months I've been very, very wet in the west coast here in Scotland. And uh, since I've been back in the new year there, I would say I've seen quite a decline in the condition of the, the beasts overall. Um, they've, been, uh, they've got very, very lean in general. Even the sort of better, generally better condition yelled hinds, uh, you know, that don't have calves. Are uh, fairly lean themselves, you know. Uh, what date is that? The sixteenth.
lean, but it's acceptable.